Okay, so um, you bought one of these fancy new GPUs, very parallel machines, very fast, they say, but they turn out to be a really bad fit to the, for the sequential languages that, uh, that you're used to. So what's the solution? Well, these functional programming guys say that functional programming is just, is just dandy for parallelism. So surely a functional language with built-in parallel operators, that's the way to go, right? Well, now you have a new problem. Um, turns out that a naive compiler is, doesn't generate very good code for a functional language. And GPUs, while it's true they need a lot of parallelism, they need it in a very special way. They're really quite restricted machines and just need to, to play them right to get the performance you're looking for. So the solution is more like uh, spend four years carefully designing a language and making sure that it enables the construction of an, of an effective optimizer compiler that can generate good code. And you really need the language design to enable the, the design of that compiler. And uh, we've done that, we think, and we call it a uh, FUTAG. So FUTAG is a small, eagerly evaluated, purely functional language. It has built-in parallel constructs, and the syntax looks like a little bit of, of standard ML and Haskell. Um, for example, we can define some functions. This uh, add to function takes as, uh, as argument an array of uh, n integers and just adds two to each of them using map. Apply a function to each element of an array. We can also have sum, which uh, also takes an array of uh, n integers and performs a reduction, which takes a function that must be associative, a neutral element for that function, and then the array. So this computes the sum of an, uh, of an array of integers. And then you can map sum on top of an n by m array and get back an n element array. So that's an example of nested parallelism, where you can have one parallel operator reduce that contains more parallelism. In this case, I'm, uh, uh, sorry, a map that contains a reduction. That's an example of, uh, of regular nested data parallelism. Um, we also, you can also construct an array out of nothing. IOTA creates an array from zero to whatever, um, and replicate just repeats some values a number of times. FUTRAC also has a specialized syntax for sequential loops. In this case, we say we have a, loop, a, a, a variant parameter called x, which is initially one, and then n times we apply this expression, get a result, and bind that to the new value of x. So that's a, that's a semantically equivalent to a tail recursive function, but it makes it a little easier for the compiler that it can recognize these uh, bounded loops. We also have while loops, but they don't matter for this talk. Um, to show how FUTRAC works, I'll uh, discuss a small part of a k-means uh, cluster, clustering algorithm um, that we've taken from a, a, a published benchmark suite. So um, k-means clustering is about taking some array of n points in some d-dimensional space and partitioning them into k clusters. This is an example where, of a two-dimensional space being partitioned into three clusters. Um, the algorithm has, has several steps. What we'll focus on is the third step down here, where we have some kind of assignment from points to cluster IDs, and then we want to compute the average of all the points in the cluster, which then becomes a new cluster center. Um, we can do that sequentially by just having an accumulator, which is a K by D matrix, a, so a D-dimensional point for every cluster that starts out zero, and then we go through the, the end points. For each point, we see which cluster does it belong to, and we add that point divided by the number of points in the cluster, which we somehow magically know, uh, to the accumulator. So in this case, the first point belongs to the green cluster. We add it to the green part of the accumulator. Second is red, and so forth. We, we can express that in FUTAG uh, this way. First, we define a small convenience function for adding two points. That takes two D, uh, size D uh, vectors and returns another size D vector. That's just a map. There's a little uh, subtlety here, which is that FUTAG's map permits any number of array arguments and just takes an element from each of them and gives them to the function. So that's more like a zip with in, a, in all the other four functional languages. Um, the sequential um, cluster means computation then uses a sequential loop initialized where the accumulator is initially a K by D uh, matrix of zeros. And then we find the cluster and we update the accumulator at position C, which is a cluster ID, with the point we just saw. So there's a trick, another trick here, which is that this thing is an in-place update. In a normal pure functional language, you would have to copy the accumulator before you could write to it. Otherwise, someone else would be able to observe that you had performed an in-place update of an, of an array. That's an, that's an effect, and we don't like that. Uh, in FUTARC, we have a, uh, a uniqueness type system that ensures that you can only do this if this array, the, the source the accumulator, or the old value of the accumulator, is never used again. That's based on, that's a, a type system technique uh, based on uniqueness types known from, from clean and which uh, statically ensures that either that in-place update cannot be observed as an in-place update or you get a type error. 
and the compiler will just will generate the, the natural in-place update code for this in the code generator. So that's a very low overhead way of implementing this in, in FUTAB. So it's pretty efficient, but there's not much parallelism here. Only these uh, maps over uh, D element arrays, and, uh, and D is usually not very large. So uh, we can also do this fully parallel. So for each point, we in fully parallel, we compute a partial accumulator, which is all zeros, except for the cluster that the point belongs to, which then contains the point. And then we can um, sum all these using um, matrix addition as the reduction operator. Uh, we can write that in FUTAC. Again, we just write, have matrix add as a utility function. Two k by d arrays produces another k by d array. And we use a map to construct these partial um, accumulators. And then we just reduce with matrix addition as the operator. So uh, this is parallel. Unfortunately, it's not work efficient. It does uh, O of k by n by d work. Whereas the, our sequential version did, uh, did just, what was it? Uh, uh, N by D. So uh, in practice, this will be quite slow and it will be become increasingly slow as the work size increases. And that's not really what we want. Um, so the problem here is that hardware is not infinitely parallel. Even a GPU has some limit above which more parallelism doesn't make sense. It has some number of threads, some number, some number, some amount of data it can process at once. And beyond that, you can continue adding more parallelism and it'll probably work, but you end up paying a lot of overhead without any benefit. So um, you need some way for the programmer to express uh, that, to express so much enough parallelism for the machine, which it doesn't know about. This is a high level language, it's not GPU specific. Uh, while, and the, and while, while the compiler can still just exploit as much of the parallelism as necessary and turn the residual parallelism into efficient sequential code. So it looks like this with a diagram. Um, for, we, we turn the input into chunks, and for each chunk, we give it one thread, or we give one, each thread a chunk, and then we run the sequential uh, algorithm inside each thread, which produces one of uh, these accumulators, and then we sum the accumulators using matrix addition. Um, there will, there will be, there will, we still have, so we still have this reduction stage at the end, but the number of accumulators we have to sum is proportional to the amount of parallelism that we're exploiting, not the amount of, uh, of points in the original input. So in FUTAC, this is done with a special language construct called, it's called a stream reduction, this stream red here, which takes a associative operator, the matrix addition, and then it takes a function to apply to every chunk. And that function is also given the chunk size, because that is determined at runtime. We don't know the hardware, we don't know the input size, so the programmer doesn't know the chunk size, he just knows that this function will be called the sum chunk size, and then this points prime and membership prime will be some interval of the original inputs, which are, are given down here. And then we just call the, the sequential cluster means each thread produces a, a uh, accumulator. And in the end, uh, after, after that, the matrix addition is going to be used to combine it into one result. Um, and the interesting thing here is that if we decide that we need as much parallelism as possible, we just set the chunk size to one then the loop inside the sequential function becomes, goes away and you just have the, the map reduce thing as I showed you before, if that's what we want. Or if this is deep inside some other computation that's already plenty parallel, we can just set the chunk size to uh, the full array. Then the, the sequential function is applied uh, once. There's no reduction afterwards because there's only one accumulator. And then you have a fully sequential implementation just that has the exact same code as the handwritten sequential version. So this allows the compiler sort of to dial up and down how much parallelism to exploit. Um, precisely what it does is it breaks this stream red into two and it somehow computes the, the ideal number of threads to use. That's a runtime decision based on hardware heuristics, maybe auto-tuning, whatever. It's not so important here. Somehow we know a number of threads and for each thread we get a result and a result is a k by d matrix. Then we do a reduction of those uh, k by d matrices. Um, but we still have a bit of a problem because matrix addition isn't really a good reduction operator on a GPU because the, the, the elements that it works on, these k by d matrices can be very large and might, might not fit in the fast local memory that we ideally want to use for efficient reduction. Um, but the FUTRA compiler still has a pretty good view of what's going on. So it can perform an operation called interchange reduce within a map where it interchanges the reduction um, to the innermost uh, level at the cost of doing a transposition of the input. So it looks like this. We, uh, this rearrange is morally a transposition where we take the outermost dimension and move it inwards. So now this num threads dimension is at the innermost part of the array. And then our, our, our combination suddenly looks like this. Two maps containing a reduction. 
where the, where the reduction is on scalars. Um, this pattern uh, is, uh, can be implemented as a segmented, it is a segmented reduction, which has a, an, uh, an efficient implementation and GPUs, which the compiler will then, uh, will then use. So it ends up running pretty fast. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the speed up of the chunk um, program compared to the fully parallel one is 7.6 on an NVIDIA Tesla K40, if you have a million points in a three-dimensional space and five clusters. So it, so it really pays off. And I don't have the, that number on the slide, but if you ask the compiler to just turn it into sequential code, it would have the exact same performance as the handwritten uh, sequential um, implementation. So uh, what you just saw is a special a limited case of the compiler not inventing new parallelism. It's that parallelism is already there in the program that the, that the programmer wrote, but, re, but rewriting it to make it uh, um, more digestible for a GPU. And we, have, we, we, we do this, and the, the basic problem is, uh, is that what FUTAC permits nested regular parallelism, GPUs only really support flat parallelism. That's a bit of a simplification, but it's good, it's good enough for now. Um, so, morally, what the compiler should do is rewrite the program so that it contains perfectly nested maps. A perfectly nested map can be, it can be flattened out and be turned into one PPU kernel. Um, also, it doesn't, and what's inside that perfectly nested map can be some arbitrary sequential computation. It can also be a reduction or a few other things that we can be recognized as being particularly nice for a GPU, like a scan or a transpose or whatnot. Um, this is a simple example. We have a map. And we could just say, this, is, this map is parallel. Let's just turn this into sequential code. And that might be fine, but if we want to exploit these inner two parallel operations, we can split it apart into two map nests. One that just contains a map with a reduce inside of it, and one that contains a map with another map inside of it. Now, the trick here is that uh, we, have, we, have, we had a variable here, y, which is used in the second statement down here, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the form where we have two map nests, we are producing an array, an expanded array of the y values, which are then passed in to the second map nest here, and then they become, they become accessible again. Um, this idea um, is kind of like a loop distribution in a, in a, in a traditional imperative compiler. Um, there have been some previous uh, approaches uh, this, uh, to this. This is a problem that has been uh, known since the, since the 90s. Uh, Blelock did a lot of work in the context of the Nessel language where did a full flattening that can turn, can, can turn any nested irregular parallelism into flat parallelism, which is really great, so it always works. The problem is it's, you usually get pretty bad performance, especially on a, on a GPU, because it, it, it really exploits all available parallelism. It doesn't stop. And uh, that's, usually, that's, that's not always worth it. For example, matrix multiplication, the innermost parallelism is uh, often best left sequential. It's uh, wasteful of memory, so because of, of all this parallelism, it has to create some really large intermediate arrays, and it destroys access pattern information. So, you, so the sequential code that is always inside this, the parallel um, loops just becomes some incom incomprehensible stuff that no compiler can, can, do, uh, can optimize. In particular, cannot, they cannot do locality of reference optimizations like loop tiling, which are pretty important. Uh, there's also in the imperative context uh, polyhedral compilers, which can, which can do some of this but they're limited to affine programs, and they de are dependent on, on low-level analysis, whereas we use uh, higher-order rules. And the, the paper has a more detailed comparison of that. So now, our basic idea is we have a bunch of rules for rewriting the program. The main rule is inspired by loop fusion, where, which, just, which explains how we can convert two maps into one map. Now, we can also run that backwards and turn one map into two. Um, so that's, that's the core of how we can turn some irregular map nest into several perfectly uh, nested map nests. Um, and this is the main rule, and we also have some, some other more, spe more specialized ones, which are described in the paper, that we use to, ex to uh, convert the parallelism in the program to parallelism that the, com that the GPU can work with. So let's take an example of some complicated map nest. Don't worry about this, what this computes is quite contrived. Um, if we assume that this uh, PSS array, our outermost input array, has a shape, is uh, of size m by m, um, then we could just choose to sequentialize all of this stuff inside. And then you have m threads that can do some work. Uh, and they each run a bunch of loops. Um, but maybe we can do a little better. So the compiler goes uh, bottom up, looks at this uh, sequential loop here, sees, well, this is loop is sequential, but there's a parallel loop inside of it. 
So um, maybe we can do something here. So it will distribute the sequential loop into a map nest by itself. That doesn't by itself help because you still don't have a perfect nesting here. That's this annoying sequential loop in the way. But what it then does is it interchanges the outermost uh, map with the sequential loop. We described in the paper why this is valid, but it's all of the same. It's, it's well known in the imperative context that you can always interchange a, a fully parallel loop inwards, and that's more basically what we're doing here. So let me get this. We move the sequential loop out. So now we have a perfect map nest in here, which could be a GPU kernel that is then being, going to be executed several times, one for each iteration of the sequential loop. But maybe we can go further. So we saw now the compiler starts looking inside this uh, new map nest, find some, uh, some scalar code, not interesting, find some more uh, scalar code, and still not interesting. Then it finds a reduction, and the compiler knows that if a reduction can be taken out by its own and turned into its own map nest, then it corresponds to a segmented reduction, which then allows us to exploit three levels of parallelism, both these two maps and this innermost, and this, this innermost one. So we'll do that and create another kernel. Um, so now we're done with, done with, uh, with that part. It continues up. Finds another map here. Again, if you want to exploit that map, we have to make it a perfect nest. So it's distributed into its own map nest. And that's another kernel right there. Then we move up again, and we find a reduction. And just like before, we really like having, um, turning reductions into their own map nest, because it allows us to exploit more parallelism. Unfortunately, we cannot, we cannot hear. And that's because Futark only supports regular arrays. So if you have a, a 2D array, every row must have the same size. And the problem is this array, CS, has a size that is variant to this uh, map here. The size of, of, of CS is P, and P is bound by this map. So we would not be able to create this expanded array. We would not be able to explain its size in terms of variables that are, that are bound before or before all this, uh, all this map nest appears. Um, so unfortunately, we have to leave this reduction, and uh, we also have to leave this scan, the, the scan. So these two loops are, are turned into sequential code. Um, and, but, uh, but all is not lost, because while they have to be sequentialized, they still have this high-level functional loop structure, a reduction and a scan with very, predictive, with, with very predictable access patterns, which the compiler can then use to do other optimizations. So there's a lot of information there for sequential optimization, even though we couldn't uh, exploit the parallelism in this case. So the result is this. Uh, this is a skeleton of the result where we originally started with a map that we can just naively parallelize and get a one kernel with m threads. We now have four kernels with m squared, m cubed, m cubed, and m squared threads. Whereas where the last two kernels are, are going to be invo invoked several times in a sequential loop, which might not be uh, the best idea, but um, right now uh, we have these rules for rewriting the program, finding the optimal rules to apply. That, that's still future work. Currently it's based on heuristics, so it might make the wrong choice, but uh, but it, in practice, it seems to work out pretty well. Um, and that's actually the next thing, because we are proposing a rather new programming model. Well, it has exi existed for a long time, but we are claiming that it's actually a good idea to do it. Um, data parallel functional programming. So in order to verify that this is worth anyone's time, we wanted to implement a lot of programs in, in Futark and see how well they performed or whether it was feasible. So we have taken... Um, a, a lot of benchmarks from, step from, from published benchmark suites, these are, from, for example, these nine from, from Rodinia, and port them to Futark and see how well they perform compared to the original handwritten OpenGL code running on GPUs, running on both an NVIDIA and an AMD GPU. And generally, we do pretty well. And Futark, uh, I don't have a way of quantifying that the Futark code is nicer than the handwritten GPU code, but it's probably easy to believe. Um, when we do extremely well, like on, on the nearest neighbor benchmark, where we get a 16 times speed up, it's usually because the reference implementation forgot to parallelize everything, whereas with Futsag, it's kind of natural to express everything in a parallel way. Uh, with my side, uh, while the reference implementation doesn't work on AMD, we get almost a five times speed up because it's a program that involves a ton of scalar computation with, with uh, some sequential arrays, and the programmer screwed up some of the memory accesses so that they are non coalesced which is a a technical thing about how GPUs must access memory to get the best performance. And that's very easy for a human to screw up or just get not do because it's very tedious. But the compiler doesn't get tired, so we'll just do it automatically. Um, compared to really well-optimized code, uh, the speed ups we get for something like Lava MD or CFD are probably more realistic, where we don't beat handwritten code, but we don't do, well, we, but we don't do embarrassingly bad either. We get within 
uh, 84% or 76% of, uh, of uh, hand-in performance. And that's with a program that is portable and we believe easier to read and was probably also easier to write. Um, so uh, in conclusion, these uh, chunking uh, data parallel operators, the stream reduction, permit a balance between uh, fully, fully parallel execution and fully sequential execution that allows the compiler to choose a chunking factor, a degree of parallelism that is optimal for the given hardware and can, and can even be auto tuned if necessary. Um, we've shown how regular nested parallelism can be efficiently turned into flat parallelism via loop fission uh, or loop distribution. And we've shown that if you take these ideas and put them into a language and write some real programs, the performance you get is actually quite decent. That's it. Okay, we have about uh, four minutes for questions. Um, I, I have a, a well. So, so you show how, how to to modify the the code and to transform in it more parallel uh, and um, code. But um, do you also plan to modify the data in the way that they will perfect, perfectly uh, shoot? your target. Yes, I didn't have time to talk about that, but the Futa compiler will reorganize how data is stored in memory to ensure coalesced access, mostly by transposing arrays that are, where, that are being sequentially traversed within one thread. And that's extremely important, that, that actually, that's, that's what uh, the human program has screwed up in my side, and that Futa does well. Uh, so, it's very important, and we do it. Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, as part of your as part of, okay. as part of your flat name operation, um, yes. you often introduce intermediate arrays, right? Uh, which seems like if you're in the memory constraint setting on a GPU, this could potentially blow past your again fast memory. You might have to send stuff out to, to much slower memory. Yes, Do you run into these problems. Uh, uh, no, because we're mostly working. Right now, we all reported benchmarks where that already fit in GPUs because that's what they're written for. But yeah, no, we don't have a solution to that. Uh, so it looks like modern GPUs are better at sort of transparently paging to, uh, to host memory. We don't know the performance impact of that yet. Um, but beyond, we haven't really put much thought into skimming saving on memory usage. But in general, you can see, for example, here, many of these arrays only lie for the very next kernel, so you could reuse a lot of the memory. Uh, we don't, we're still working on getting that right. We have a, a student who should, who should do that for us. Uh, but a student during development is not always predictable. Uh, related to this question, so how much freedom do you have to reschedule those uh, those operations such that those, I mean, the interference will actually be reduced because you do have this functional uh, yeah. semantics that gives you some freedom. Basically, uh, except for some very exotic cases related to in-place updates, which do enforce some ordering, the only thing that prevents us from reordering things are the ex are explicit data dependencies, uh, which we can't directly do anything about, of course. But beyond that, we have full freedom to reorganize us uh, as we want. And how do you analyze them? Like uh, well, right now we don't actually reorder anything. Oh, okay. You but could. Yes, we could. It would probably be a good idea. Uh, I have one last question while our next speaker sets up. Um, the programming model itself is just a very nice way of taking advantage of having shape information and things like that to do a very good job of things like data layout and, and flattening and things. Uh, what would it take if you wanted to target uh, a different kind of accelerator, like Xeon Phi? I don't know about the CN5, but in our experience, this uh, GP, we generate OpenCL code, and we have some assumptions about how the hardware works, so we can optimize for GPUs, kind of, but it also runs really well on, on the CPU backends for OpenCL we've tried. Uh, we also tried a CN5 backend where it didn't run so well, but I don't know the details of, of why or what to make it differently. But most of these optimizations we do are really just about improving the amount of parallelism that we can exploit. So all this low-level stuff about how we reorganize memory and figure out group size and all that stuff, that you can probably easily just change or auto-tune your way to or something. Our open shell code we generate is portable, so it runs correctly everywhere, but not fast everywhere. Uh, if there are no more questions, let's take Joel to the end.